Hey, good evening, everyone. How's it going? Um, um, I'm not sure if anyone's here yet watching, um, but if you are, welcome to draw something with Andy. That's me. Um, I'm uh, going to hmm, go ahead and just start drawing. Um, make sure to wear green. No one's going to be pinching me today. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I think in the spirit of St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to start by drawing a leprechaun. So let's see here. I'll go ahead and start with the head. Got him uh, giving him a nice big chin there. I'll give him a nice little hat right here. Has a nice has a big buckle on it. All right, there we go. And uh, oh, I got a uh, all right. Hey there, Tracer Fed. Um, zombie chicken with a shamrock and brain smoothie. That sounds absolutely incredible, and I will totally draw that for you. All right, zombie chicken. <laughs> oh, okay, so all right, so I think for starters, I'll go ahead and. Draw the eyes. Gonna make them look uh, pretty uh, creepy. I'm actually gonna go the extra mile here and have one eye be this full iris and pupil and have the other one just be this tiny little dot. I feel like that makes it extra creepy looking. And why not I'll also add in some veins here. There we go. Just gonna make this as disturbing looking as possible. Brains. <laughs> All right. So, go ahead and uh, gonna have a bite taken out of its head, cause zombie. Sure, why not? All right. Gonna draw the beak here. All right. So, got his. Got big tongue sticking out there the, out of the beak. <laughs> oh boy. Got this got the saliva dripping off of it. That's gross. What's I mean, hey, what's grosser? Is it the uh what, what do you think is grosser? The uh bite taken out of the head or the saliva dripping off the tongue? I'm I'm thinking the head is probably grosser. Okay, so we got uh Got our chicken head here. Um, gonna add the comb, which also has a bite taken out of it. He's just he's he's not good. He's not he's not in good shape. This this uh, chicken's seen some things. All right, so go ahead and draw the body. Just a nice round poop and. All right, so a zombie and uh, shamrock, or brain and shamrock sh smoothie. Okay, yeah. All right, so go ahead and draw the wing here. I'll draw another wing on this side to match it. All right, there we go. Oh, and hello, L. Lowry. Nice to see you here. Hmm. All right. Hmm. A shamrock and brain smoothie. So, all right. Got a smoothie there with the straw. I'll even add some stripes to the straw. All right. So, uh, shamrock and brains. All right. I'll go ahead and. Start, yeah, I'll have the little, have some, you know, little shamrocks just uh, hanging out in there. They didn't quite get mixed in correctly, so they're still just sitting in their hole. All right. Okay, so. Now I got the shamrocks, now the brains. Um, I'll just go ahead and stick like it and, you know, an entire, I'll stick an entire brain in there that 
didn't get mixed in. There's the cerebrum, the cerebellum, the brainstem. Add in some little squigglies there to represent the uh, the lobes. Is that what they're called? <laughs> yeah, DJ Mike Brady, me too. Me, Brady, me too. I uh, <laughs> this is gonna look pretty epic in color. All right, so um. Now I'm going to have this uh, oversized leg, and of course, there's a bite taken out of the leg. I, I don't know. Hmm. So, there we go. All right. <laughs> Uh, so how's everyone out there doing tonight? Um, sorry, I'm not being super talkative. I'm just doing some basic, just drawing some little lines here. <clears throat> All right. Um, I think that basically covers it. Um, maybe add a couple of warts here. To really amp up the creepy factor. Gross. Uh, one of the warts actually uh, is spewing out a big tunnel of gas because, you know. Yeah. Creepy. All right. Um, I. I think that basically, oh, I should actually, yeah, I should add a tail, too. Um, and, of course, you know, gotta keep the theme going. Uh, the tail has a bite taken out of it. <laughs> this, this chicken just can't catch a break. All right, so for Tracer Fett, there is your zombie chicken with a shamrock and brain smoothie. Let me uh, go ahead and switch the view here so you can get a nice view of it. All right. <laughs> yep, L. Lowry. Uh, I, I feel like McDonald's would, you know, really benefit from uh, at introducing that. I think it would be a big hit. All right. So... I'm going to go back to drawing my leprechaun here. I'm glad you like it, Tracer Fed. <clears throat> that was a very awesome request to start the show with. All right, so... Going to have the leprechaun just kind of doing a little jig here. Got his arms waving around. Hmm. <clears throat> He's dancing for his pot of gold. They're not going to be Irish, don't you know? All right. Oh. Give him a nice nose there. There we go. Got some legs. Hmm. Uh, L. Lowry brings up a very valid point. I am a bit Irish. Um, I, I can't make things magically turn green or summon a pot of gold, so I'm obviously not super Irish, but I'm, I'm Irish enough. All right. So we give him his little boots. There we go. Um, go ahead and give him a collar here. All right. Give him some squiggly eyebrows. Yep, gotta have the boots, Al Lowry. 
All right. So. All right. Give him his eye pupils. All right. So there we go. We got our uh, dancing leprechaun there. We're gonna add some motion lines. He's doing a jig. And the reason he's doing a jig is because he just found that fabled treasure that we all know leprechauns love most. He's pot of gold. So I got the pot here, and I'm going to add some uh, that big old bunch of gold coins. You could literally buy planet Earth with that and probably the next planet after that. You can, buy, you can buy Earth and Mars. Oh, uh, Komodo, Komodo Cerelius, uh, very good to see you again. And no, oh, Chill Guy 710, what's up? Great to see both. Great to see both of you. And uh, all right, so Komodo Cerelius, uh, you requested a chimp riding a bike and wearing a sombrero. That is another awesome request. I'm just gonna finish up my pot of gold here, and I will get on that. All right, got to add the flare. That is some shiny gold. All right, there we go. All right, so for Komodo Sorelius, I am going to draw a chimp riding a bike and wearing a sombrero. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, start off with the head here. Gonna give him a couple of ears. All right, so I got the got the eyes and the nose. He's going, ooh, 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 ooh. All right, so we got, all right, so we got the monkey here. Got his head anyway, you gotta draw the rest of him. All right, so go ahead and, gonna go ahead and, not the, I'm not the most experienced with drawing uh, characters riding bicycles, so I'm gonna, Try something. I'm, I'm going to try and work backwards here instead of uh, drawing him riding the bike. First, I'm going to start drawing the bike. I'm going to draw the wheels first. So we got uh, got our bicycle wheels here. Got those little lines for the spokes. And uh, hmm. Let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, all right. Put the handlebars right there. I'll even add a little bell on there because, you know, got to make, make sure people know where he's going. There we go. All right, so I'm going to trace the body here for the bike. And uh, then I'll go ahead and go ahead and redo that here. All right, so... We got our chimp coming together here. He's got a body. I'll trace over it in a second. I'm just sketching it out. And uh, draw the sketching out the pedals here. All right. Okay, I think I'm ready to start <clears throat> phrasing this over. Ooh, almost wrinkled the paper there. <clears throat> All right, I'm erasing this so I can just get it out of the frame. All right, here we go. Gonna make the lines a little squiggly here because he's got fur. Or hair. 
Do monkeys have fur or hair? I, I can't remember. All right. Uh, thank you, Chill Guy 710. All right. All right, drying the body here for the bike. Oh, and uh, I guess I kind of forgot to draw the seat. Oops. All right. All right, there we go. He's got a... All right, so there we go. He's got a seat. Here we got the pedals. Gotta go ahead and draw the gears here. There we go. All right, gonna draw the gears inside this back tire here. All right, there we go. All right, so I got a. <laughs> Alright, uh, L. Lowry, thank you. Monkeys apparently do have fur. Good. Um, Alright, we got a chimpanzee riding a bike, or a, a monkey riding a bike. God, maybe he's not specifically a chimpanzee. He's a monkey. Alright, got the monkey on the bike. Now I gotta add the finishing touch here with a big ol' sombrero. And I'll just make it ridiculously huge, because... I don't know. <clears throat> go big or go home. All right, there we go. We got a big old Mexican hat right there. Uh, this little pattern here right by the brim. And uh, I think that'll do it. Um, he's, uh, he's whistling, too. I'm going to have him just whistling as he's just riding along on his little bike. And I think that'll do it. Uh, Komodo Cerulius, there you go. There is your <laughs> chimp riding a bike and wearing a sombrero. Yes, it must be huge, Larissa Lowry. All right, so... Um, <laughs> thank you, chill guy. I like it, too. All right, so there we go. Hmm, I'm glad you like it, Camus Aurelius. All right, very good. Um, so uh, I'll uh, go ahead and uh, oh, let me just go ahead and give the full view so I can show everyone. All right, there you go. All right, back to multi-view. There we go. I'm, uh... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just draw. What should I do here? Uh, anyone got, anyone out there got a request? Uh, Chill Guy 710, do you have a request for me? I would love to hear it. All right, um, Mario Surfing. I like that. All right. So let me see here. Go ahead and start with the head. Gotta give him his hat, of course. You often, you see, you occasionally see Mario without his hat, but it always doesn't look quite right. All right, so there is Mario. Oh, doesn't look quite right. All 
All right, drawing the eyes here. In the mustachio. And yeah, I don't um, I don't know. Something about this hat doesn't look Mar doesn't look quite right for Mario. You see if I can change it up here a bit. Alright. Alright, there we go. We got Mario. Got his hat. We'll go ahead and start tracing that over here. So, uh, fun fact, there's actually a, there's an old Mario Edutainment game uh, from the early 90s called Mario's Time Machine, and uh, in one of the versions, specifically the Super Nintendo version, uh, there's actually a part in the game where Mario actually does surf. When, he, uh, when you go back to a certain spot in time, you have to surf. <laughs> it's a very weird game. It's actually kind of notorious for being uh, one of the worst <laughs> Mario games out there. But I just I just couldn't help but think of it when Chill Guy Seven Ten requested Mario Surfing, so just throwing that trivia out there. Uh, thank you, Seven Chill Guy Seven Ten. Mm. All right, gotta draw that Scout mustache. I always love the Scout mustache. Give him a big old mouth there. All right, I'm going to draw his hair in on his big old round head. <clears throat> All right, there we go. We got his hat, got his mustache. Go ahead and add in his eyebrows. All right, so now we got the head done, so let's go ahead and move on to the body. Mario is going to hang ten. I'll even have him throw up the hang loose sign. It's a me, a Mario, hanging a loose. In fact, he's actually gonna go. He's gonna double do. He's gonna have both, uh, both doing the. Ooh, uh, wait. Just make sure my hands are. I I should have full control of my hands. They're part of my body. All right, uh, so yeah, both hands are going hanging loose, or hanging loose. Gonna make his, uh, <laughs> gonna make his, make him a little bit plumper. Mario's kind of a heavy set guy. There's no shame in that. Mm. Uh, of course, he's got to have his overalls. That is a Mario character design staple. And most of the time, they're just a, you know, very simple, you know, smooth texture. Uh, there was that one time in Super, Super Smash Bros. Brawl years and years ago where they made it look super hyper-realistic. Um, they never really went back to that after that game. I thought, thought it was kind of weird. They introduced it for that game only, but never again. I, don't know, I never actually played the game. I just remember that being a big part of the marketing was Mario's super hyper-realistic overalls which was just such an odd thing to see. All right, so we got Mario doing his surfing stance. Once again, going to have those uh, boots. I'm pretty sure Mario wears boots. Even when he's surfing, he, he never takes them off. He wears them in his sleep. And uh, go ahead and Draw out the board. And I'll even uh, add onto the board a mushroom. Got 
That is the source of Mario's power. So he, of course, has to have it on his board. All right, so there we go. Uh, put a little fin there at the bottom of the board. All right, so we got Mario on his surfboard, and let's go ahead and have a big old wave that he's surfing right on down the Mushroom Kingdom uh, Ocean. Koopa Ocean? No, no, not Koopa Ocean. Koopa, uh, that would be Bowser's. Uh, maybe it's the Toadstool Ocean, you know, Princess Peach <clears throat> has, uh, has a lot of notoriety in the Mushroom Kingdom, so they might as well name the whole uh, big body of water surrounding the kingdom after her. Alright, so we got ourselves a wave, we got Mario hanging loose, and uh, there you go, Shell Guy 710. Let me go ahead and bring out the full view. Alright, make sure everyone gets to see that. <clears throat> Thank you, Chill Guy 710. <clears throat> I am so glad you like it. Alright. So, I think for right now, um, Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm a little slow this evening. Uh, thank you, L. Lowry. Oh, uh, chill guy, um, oh, I will happily give it to you. Mm. Mm. All right, so I think for now, ah, L. Lowry requested Paddington. I can totally do that. All right, so Paddington. Okay. I think I'm going to start with a hat, because I, it seems like whenever Paddington has his big hat on it, usually, you know, really covers it covers a big part of his head. Like, it's, it's very much the big prominent part of him, part of his character design. So I'll go ahead and start with a big old hat. It's got a big, wide brim. Yeah, this is the, this is the second drawing I'm doing tonight with a big hat, actually. All right, so uh, let me see here. All right, so there's his big hat. Okay. Gonna try to draw the head here. Give him a couple little button eyes. Button nose. And I know he has a big old, you know, he has a, his double coat is another trademark. Uh, so they made, they did Paddington Two uh, a couple of years ago. I haven't heard any news about them making a third one. Um, I did really like the first two. I'm hoping that they do make a third one. I mean, I, I, as long as it's good, I, I don't want them to milk it. But if they could make a third one, I would, uh, I would appreciate that. I uh, really like those months when I was little, and I still like them now. I haven't read them in a while, but they still held up when I read them again a few years ago, already as an adult. All right. Uh, hey, Art Vandalay, 1979. Um, uh, well, so far I've drawn a... Uh... So for myself, I drew this leprechaun dancing for a pot of gold. Uh... Tracer Fit requested a zombie chicken with a shamrock and brain smoothie. And uh, Komodo Cerulius requested a chimp riding a bike wearing a sombrero. So we've already got some uh, pretty colorful creations tonight. And currently I'm drawing... A, I'm drawing Paddington Bear for L. Lowry. So let's see, all right, so I'm going to give him a big poofy double coat. Going to have the ripples there. There we 
go. All right, so I, <laughs> I don't, I don't believe Paddington wears pants. I think he just wears a, I think he just wears his coat. So I'll go ahead and just uh, draw his body here. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna try and replicate his fur. Hopefully it actually looks like fur and doesn't look like chicken pox. <laughs> actually, um, I feel like maybe it would probably be a little more effective if I made his uh, made the line here a little more uh, jagged. That shows that he's furry. There we go. Do that on the legs too. All right. And uh, finally, let's add in the hands. Thank you, DJ Mike Brady. Um, you're not, I don't think you're really missing a whole lot by not listening. I'm, I've been pretty quiet tonight, but I'm glad you're enjoying the drawings. All right. I think, uh, I think that basically covers, oh yeah, his hat has a little ribbon on it, I think. I think it's kind of falling apart a little bit. So I'll add that in too. And, uh. I think that is uh, that does it for Paddington for L. Lowry. Thank you so much for the request. Uh, all right, let me go ahead and transition to full view. There we go. I'm actually gonna I'll add some fur texture to his bottom body, bottom portion legs. There we go. All right, so uh, next up, I'm uh, going to go ahead and just uh, pass the time by drawing uh, DJ Mike Brady. Uh, DJ Mike Brady is my dad. He has been doing his own show here on Twitch for the last almost a whole year called the Thursday Night Quarantine Party. It's a good time. I, uh, it's going to be happening, we're going to be having, it's going to be week 50 of the Thursday Night Quarantine Party uh, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Pacific. So I'm looking forward to that. All right. So just drown the uh, legs here, the pants. Give him some shoes. There we go. And I'm going to have him on his trademark flying record. I, I honestly, I I would I want I want a giant flying record, but apparently uh, Dad Dad says that they're like a really they're like a really big. Um, you gotta, you really gotta earn your right to a giant record by really bringing the music the way it should be brought. All right, so gonna add his trademark five o'clock shadow here, and uh, also give him some teeth. There we go. Add some motion lines. That record is spinning really quick. I also also have them like flying in from uh, the top corner. There we go. And then some music notes. All right, there is DJ Mike Brady.
So I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna just draw another one of my characters here. Uh, I'm gonna draw my uh, <laughs> Cowabunga dude. <laughs> so let me go ahead and just give the full view for the PG Mike Brady drawing. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw um, another one of my characters based on one of my family members, my little sister Danny. So I'll start off with the round head, of course. And uh, I'm going to draw Danny in her... Uh, as, as she's uh, she's gotten older now, I started drawing her as a cartoon character when she was pretty little in, like, kindergarten. So I had her in, like, a cute little headband and a flower shirt and striped pants. I've done away with that recently because she's now 12, so she's kind of outgrown that depiction. But I think for just because I feel like it, I'm going to go ahead and just draw her younger self here. So I'll go ahead and add the headband there. All right. So yeah, I got the headband. Go ahead and add some bangs. Got the eyes. Big old smile. Add the body here, the upper, the upper body. And I'll go ahead and add the rest of her hair here. Give her some big eyebrows. Uh, got the flower there on her shirt. Now I'll go ahead and draw her pants. Add some stripes there. And there's Danny. Go ahead and... All right, <clears throat> there you go. <clears throat> Thank you, Chill Guy Seven Ten. Really appreciate it. All right. So I'm just gonna. I think I'm just gonna keep. Drawing some of my characters. Um, if uh, you have a request, by all means, drop it in the chat. I will totally jump on it. Oh, Art Vandalay, 1979. Uh, your daughter, a hamster eating a carrot. On it. I will do that. Okay, hamster eating a carrot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw the carrot first so I know how to position the hamster. All right, so go ahead and add some of those ripples that carrots tend to have. Yeah, add the stem here. There we go. Got a big old juicy carrot. Add some majesty lines. All right, so all right, go ahead and draw his head there. Hmm. Got the hamster <laughs> kind of squinted his eyes a bit as he's ready to chomp down on this old carrot. Got his tongue sticking out about to touch that glorious tastiness. I'll go ahead and draw his body here. He's a... Uh... <laughs> Reaching out his paw. 
actually, you know, um, this is actually, I'm getting, uh, getting some inspiration here. Uh, Alright, so he's he's reaching out like he seems to be really, really desperate to get this carrot. Why is he so desperate to get this carrot? Because uh this evil monster hand because why not is uh grabbing his other leg and trying to prevent him from having a nice feast. I honestly don't know what this hand's problem is. I think People, I think all animals, I think all animals should have a right to eat something. Let me move the paper down so I can show you the arm. Yeah, has some, has some spikes added to it. That's how you know it's really uh, bad news. So yeah, this uh, old hamster here is. He's a uh, he's a uh, he's making a big effort. He's he's really really wanting to get that carrot. But this, uh, this creepy hand doesn't want him to have it. I don't know why. <laughs> Thank you, Chill Guy 710. All right, so. Oh, although I just realized she, your daughter, uh, Art Vandalay, 1979, your daughter wanted to see a hamster eating a carrot. He's not quite eating the carrot. He's being held back from eating the carrot. So let me go ahead and uh, not, let me go ahead and do another drawing here to fit that original request. Go ahead. And, I'm gonna go ahead and do an after shot where he's finally escaped the evil hand. <laughs> yeah. Oh. El Lowry knows what's up. She uh, she figured out the evil hand's plan. I <laughs> evil hand, you, you better watch out. Somebody's on to you. And her name is El Lowry. In the chat on Twitch. All right, so go ahead and do the after shot here, where this uh, hamster's had his fill. He had that carrot, and he's. Now, rest and easy. Just put his arms behind his head there. He's just chilling out. I'll go ahead and... Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and add the uh, stem here. That's all that's left of the carrot. All right, there we go. <laughs> add a couple little chunks there he has on his fur. All right, so yeah, he uh, he's just taking a nice chillax, chillaxation, that chillax vacation. Add some little hairs there on top, and he's uh, <laughs> he's very full. And uh, about the evil, you know, how, so how did he stop the evil hand from uh, stopping him from eating the carrot? He, uh, well, he, he kind of, I, I guess you could say he uh, kind of sort of tied it up with a ton of rope. Yeah, a bunch of rope just kind of sitting there, and he's like, oh, I could use this. So he went ahead and tied that hand up so it has no chance of escaping ever again. That is one happy hamster, DJ Mike Brady. Indeed.
The hands just kind of bummed out. Oh, man. All right, let me go ahead and transition to full view. Oh, I'm sorry, I was already on full view. Still getting the hang of this. All right, there we go. So we got the before where the hamster is trying to eat a carrot and this mysterious evil hand is keeping him from it because of its own nefarious plans to, I, as L. Lowry suggested, eat the carrot itself. And then we have the aftermath where the hamster has had his fill, he's sitting there super satisfied, and the hand is uh, its a bit tied up at the moment. And that is for Arts Vandalay 1979 and his daughter. All right, very good. So... <clears throat> Thank you, Chill Guy 710. I, I like to try and have a full narrative of my drawings when it's possible. Alright, so um, right now I think I'm gonna. I'm looking at uh, my. Uh, Thank you, Art Vandalay. I'm glad you like it. <clears throat> I'm. No, thank you for your request. I was, or thank you, thank your daughter for her, her request. It was a good one. All right, uh, right now I'm gonna go ahead and draw an evil. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a character from one of my older books, um, the evil pencil. So, uh, if you see uh, over there in the corner, I have my uh, social media profiles there uh, for Tollbooth Publishers. That's my brand that I use. That I have for uh, my art stuff, and I've written and illustrated a lot of books over the years. Uh, so this one in particular that I'm drawing a character from was called Origami Adventures, and it's about a uh, origami crane and a jumping frog going to stop this guy, the evil pencil, from uh, kidnapping another origami that's their friend. On top of that, he's enslaved the entire pencil tribe. The entire basically, he enslaved, he enslaved his own kind because he's he's not a good guy. He's a he's a bad dude. So there you go. Got him. Got his hands up in that you know big pose. He has a big evil laugh. Whoa! Oh, hold on a second. Whoa! Uh, uh, Oh, DJ Mayberry, he's got a big idea. It's pretty elaborate. Okay, lay it on me. Like to see. Bob Ross. <laughs> I like this already. Painting a happy little dinosaur. Bob Ross painting a happy little dinosaur. Dot, dot, dot. With a happy little meteor coming in from above. <laughs> oh, that is awesome, DJ Mike Brady. That is a, that is a brilliant request. And uh, hello there, Kama Ruzaman Ben Yahaya on YouTube. And hey there, Danny. How you doing? <clears throat> if uh, you have a request, 
by all means, let me know. All right, so Bob Ross painting a happy little dinosaur with a just a little happy little meteor just coming to destroy all life as we know it. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so let's start with the master himself. So, uh, Kama Rulesman, uh, Leafy and Fiery, uh, BFDI, I'm not familiar with that, could you elaborate on, uh, what that is or where those characters are from? I haven't heard of that. Alright, so, we got Bob Ross here. Of course, has his big old afro. That's a trademark. And of course, he's got to have a goatee. Get him a smile there. Right, I'm going to just trace over what I have so far. Give me his little facial hair. So there we go. We have Bob Ross. Just happy soul. Just painting away. Go ahead and draw his easel here. Alright, so we got a happy little dinosaur. Just a happy little dinosaur. Just sitting there. Enjoying his day. Mm. That, that, that looks, yeah, no, it's a, it's a dinosaur. All right, so we got a happy little dinosaur. He's got a nice little smile. It's so it's it's a it's a really it's a really innocent drawing. It's it's super cute. And uh, then we have this uh, meteor that has a face of complete and utter terror. That's uh, just flying in at the speed of sound. And is about to crash into the earth and obliterate all existence. Actually, I'm sorry, I gave the meteor a frown. It's supposed to be a happy little meteor. I mean, there, I mean, you know, there's there's some gray area there. I mean, it is it does look happy. It's and it's you know not a huge meteor, but it's big enough to <laughs> wipe out all existence. But you know, I mean, when you're when a meteor is traveling it however fast this thing is, like, I don't know, hundreds of miles an hour, it can be fairly small and still cause the end of all life. All right, so there we go. We got our happy little meteor. It's about to land on this happy little dinosaur. And just, you know, kind of destroy everything. <sighs> All right, so yeah, go ahead and draw Bob Ross's paintbrush there. Go ahead and give him a. Nice plaid pattern on his shirt. All 
There we go. Give him, give him some legs. Also gonna give him some boots. Those are a running trend tonight. Boots. Alright. <laughs> hey, Planetary121, good to see you. And you sounded so called a giant Yoshi's instead of a giant screaming meteor. So that's the dark secret behind the angry sun from Mario 3. <laughs> Boy, uh, next time I play that game, I'm going to be a lot more afraid when that when I get to that angry sun level. <laughs> the quicksand level. Since the angry sun isn't just angry, it's literally the cause of all the di giant Yoshis dying. <laughs> oh, man. Mario Universe is just weird. It's, it's messed up. Alright, got a little tripod there for the easel. There we go. Now I'm going to just add Bob Ross just saying, you know, in his classic, gentle, soft-spoken Bob Ross way. We're going to draw... Uh, Happy little dinosaur. And a happy... Let me just look back at the chat here. Oh, I guess I can. Alright, it's fine. Happy little dinosaur and a happy little meteor. Falling from the sky. <laughs> no, I suspect not, Al Lowry. <laughs> All right. I think that'll do it. I'm going to go ahead and just add uh, some happy little palm trees into the background of this painting, give it a little more substance, give some happy little clouds, happy clouds, happy clouds. Thank you, Chill Guy 710 I really appreciate it. All right, and I'm going to call this done, so that is... <laughs> DJ Mike Brady's request of Bob Ross drawing a happy little dinosaur and a happy little meteor falling from the sky to exterminate all life as we know it, or as they knew it 65 million years ago. So there you go. <laughs> oh, Bob Ross, you will live on forever in spirit. All right. So I think for right now, I'll go ahead and draw another one of my characters. I remember uh, DJ Glenn McBride, who I haven't seen in the chat yet tonight, uh, mentioned the Grooge. So I'll go ahead and draw that for right now to pass the time. So in the uh, so the, the back some backstory. Uh, so the Grooge is from a book I wrote several years ago. So basically, it's. What starts out as it's, it's a what it is is a cautionary tale about holding a grudge. So when this thing first shows up, this Grooge, he uh, initially is just super sappy and super sympathetic. He has these big watery eyes, and he's just so <laughs> he's just so sad. He's so sad. Oh, he's so sad. Life is so unfair, isn't it? <laughs> oh, life is so unfair. 
Ooh. Oh, and yeah, also every single one of his, every single thing he says has to be punctuated with a sniffle. I forgot to add that in. Sniffle. Ooh. But, uh, eventually, um, when the main character just decides to hold on to this Scrooge for a while, it, uh, it starts to mutate into something a little less sympathetic and kind of more creepy looking. Like, I'll show his next form here. So instead of these nice, you know, soft, scalloped edges, he now is a little more jagged. And his eyes, instead of being super watery and full of emotion, are now kind of just these sort of angry looking eyes with these... Uh, little dots that just don't really show much emotion. He's got this jagged mouth. Looks kind of creepy. Not something you necessarily would want to be carrying around, but by the time that it's turned into this, it's already latched onto you, so you're in. You're in for it. And then eventually he'll turn. He turns into just this guy. Man, he grows bigger. His fur is especially jagged now. And he still has these angry eyes, but now they've gotten to be pretty intense. And add some veins here to really <laughs> hammer it in. He just has this big old jagged mouth and these jagged eyebrows. And while this uh, was original self was just super, super sad, this one just, he just does not give a crud. He is gonna just get over it! Ah! <laughs> and Chill Guy actually made a very good analogy. <laughs> um, yep, this is uh, this is Chill Guy 710 when he's hungry, and this is Chill Guy 710 when he's hangry. And we got another request here. Danny wants a leprechaun princess. All right, I can do that. Tis the season, after all, not to be Irish. All right, a leprechaun princess. Okay, so let me see here. So I drew my uh, so I drew my leprechaun earlier. Let me go ahead and find it here in my stack of drawings. Got it from somewhere. Ah, here we are. So I drew this uh, leprechaun earlier. I gave him just a, a buckle. That was kind of that was kind of the big thing I gave him was the buckle on his hat. So I think uh, I'll probably incorporate that into this. All right. So go ahead and start with the head here. And. Uh, Go ahead and draw this uh, nice little royal hat, royal cap. Gonna draw the her hair bangs coming down here past her face. There we go. All right. So to really uh, drive home that it's a leprechaun, I'm gonna. Go ahead and add that buckle in there. And when I color this in, which I will eventually do, I'm planning on coloring all the drawings I've done tonight and posting them to the social media accounts I have there on the screen. I will definitely make this, this hat will definitely be green. Her entire outfit will be green. It's gotta be green. All right, so we got the arms here.
add some hands. Dress. Gonna add some stitches there for the front. There we go. Alright, gonna give her some hair here. Add the face there. All right, I'm going to add a little veil to that royal cap. There we go. All right, so we got our got a dress, got a royal cap. Um, let's see what else I can do. Uh, we go ahead and give her just a royal staff here to really amp up the royal factor. So we got the bottom of the staff here, got the top of the staff, and I mean, I feel like it's a given. The top of the staff has to be a four leaf clover, it just has to be. So we'll go ahead and add that in here. So there we go, we got a royal staff. Go ahead and add some texture there to the bottom of the dress. And of course, it isn't a drawing of a leprechaun if there isn't a pot of gold. So there we go, there's the pot. And here's the gold. And of course, a big old rainbow coming out of the pot. And I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna add a couple. I'm gonna add some extra four-leaf clovers here to the dress to make it extra leprechaun-y. All right, and uh, I think that'll do it. So for Danny B, or I, I'm going to call her DJ Danny B. There is your Leprechaun Princess. Let me give it up. Let me bring up the full view. Right, uh, what do you think of that, Danny? Is that what you were uh, hoping for? If you want me to add anything to it, I totally can. Let me see. Uh... I'll go ahead and uh, draw a little more scenery here. Um, maybe some. Rolling green hills in the background. That was that was something I really enjoyed. That was something I really got a kick out of doing when I was little, was drawing the rolling hills, just these hmm, <laughs> continuous arcs just extending out into the distance. And Danny loves it. Very good. I'm glad you love it, Danny. And I'm sure it'll look way better in color. All right. There we go. Rolling Hills, Leprechaun Princess, Pot of Gold. Look at the Irish. All right. All right, so um, looks like we've been, I've been going for a little over an hour here, like about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, I, didn't, I didn't really have a specified ending time. I'm uh, 
I, uh, last week, my phone died, and that was where I decided to end the show. It just, my camera just suddenly went out, and it was like, okay, well, drawing cam is out. I guess that's the show. That's the end of the show. Um, I made sure to fully charge my phone going into this so that wouldn't happen. Um, so I don't know how much longer it has, but I could probably go for another 15 minutes. So uh, let me see here. I'm going to go ahead and draw another one of my characters. Uh, a sh oh, Chill Guy 710, a Chef Shark. I can do that. Oh, thank you, DJ Mike Brady. I am definitely feeling hungry. That might that that might be part of why I'm not quite as energetic or talkative as I was last week. I feel like I was a lot more interactive, and I'm this tonight. I'm I'm still kind of interactive, but I'm I'm feeling a little more subdued. It might be because I haven't eaten dinner yet, but I don't know. All right, so Chill, Chill Guy Seven Ten requested a Chef Shark. A chef shark, chef shark, chef shark, yeah, chef shark. Okay, let me go ahead and draw out the shark. The shark is going to make the food. Ah, uh, that doesn't quite look right. This is kind of looking more like a dolphin than a shark. Okay, here we go. Add in the teeth there. Oh, DJ Mike Brady, I wasn't I wasn't accusing you. If I, I mean, if I was a more responsible adult, I would have just had a snack beforehand. So, I'm not, it's not, no blame on you. No, no blame. And, uh, with Chef Shark, yeah, Planetary 121 suggests that, uh, <laughs> Chef Shark would have chipmunks roasting over an open fire. I, I don't see why not. That seems like a very shark, chef, sharky thing to do. Alright, so we got, got our shark here. Gonna add that fin. Then add his uh I think it's called a toke. I mean I've always just kind of referred to it as a chef hat, but I'm pretty sure it's a toke. So a chef shark. Go ahead and get a close up of that. And a Seth Shark. Go ahead and give him a white underbelly there. He's a great white. Go ahead and give him an extra fin just to make him a little more intimidating. Oh, I never actually finished drawing the teeth either. That's a little awkward. <laughs> okay, so we got the shark here with the teeth. And uh, all right, so <laughs> chipmunks roasting over an open fire. Go ahead and draw the spit here. <laughs> spit. All right, so let's see. So I've got our chipmunks here. So he's got him. He's he's uh, not messing around. He's got him tied down with rope. They're squirming, trying to get free, but that rope is tied tight. They're not. They're not going anywhere. It's 
pretty tragic. Alright, so yeah, we got our, there's our chipmunk right there. Actually, this, this, this actually does look a lot more like a frog than a chipmunk. Uh, they're they're a new they're a new species. They're uh, you know what, frog monks. They're frog monks. There you go, frog monks. I just coined it. It's a new species. I'm gonna go ahead and add another frog monk onto the <laughs> the uh, spit, <clears throat> and I will have. Yeah, so we got two. We got two of these guys. Just uh, well, I say they're hanging out, but they're they that would be that would be implying they're uh, super casual. They're not super casual. They're screaming for dear life. This is a very serious, desperate situation. Got our got their feet there. They got their hands here. They're just. Help! Help! Yeah, of course, you gotta add the fire. It, it would be it would be funny if I just left it like this. You'd be wondering why are they screaming? They're just simply tied onto a spit. That's not that bad. I mean, I'm sure it would get pretty boring pretty quickly just being being tied there. I mean. But yeah, like they're not they're not in too much harm, but you know, then you add this uh, blistering fire here at the bottom and suddenly the situ situation's a little more desperate. I think uh, I think I think they're in big trouble here. Alright, so we got our <laughs> we got our big roasting flame for our frog monks. I, I love that word. <laughs> Gonna add some wood here. For the logs that are keeping the fire burning. And of course, got to add some smoke. All right, and <laughs> there we go. Uh, a bon appetit. All right, so we got a Le Chef Shark roasting two frog monks over an open fire. As requested by Chill Guy 710. Let me bring up the full view. The full view was already up. <laughs> I'll get used to this setup eventually. All right. Very good. I'm glad you love it, Chill Guy 710. All right. So I'm probably going to wrap up here pretty soon. Got my dinner coming. I um, think I'm going to actually, uh, I'm going to wait until DJ Mike Brady gets here so we can get a chance to be on camera for a second. So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for him, I will uh, go ahead and draw another one of my characters here. So, uh, this is uh, one of the earlier character, earliest characters I created. This was one I created back in middle school, and his name is uh, Xerox. And I think at the time, my mindset was, oh, it's like Xerox with an X, only it's not Xerox with an X, it's Xerox with a Z. And, yeah, there, there's the name. That, that, like, you know, like, you know, simple process, didn't really... But a whole lot of thought into it. it was just kind of like I just kind of thought Xerox. That, that's the name. All right, so he's got these. Uh, he's got the shield-shaped head. He's got these six eyes. Very exotic-looking creature. The funny thing is, he you know in all the books and stories that I made with him, he just acts like a normal guy. He's not really exotic or anything. He's just a normal guy who just happens to have six eyes and a jagged smile and a shield shaped head all 
All right, so I got his head there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and draw the rest of him. He's kind of got a spider-like body. He's got two legs on either side here, and he's got one leg down the middle. And then I'll draw the other legs he has in the back. I think he overall has like uh, six legs. He's got two legs off to the side and one leg in the front and one leg in the back. He's got these little, uh, I don't want to call them spikes, these little scales. I wonder, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what to call these. These little, uh, these little things that he has on his legs. And uh, yeah, that is Xerox. So there you go. All right, um, so another character, um, all right, so I mentioned earlier, um, I was drawing the evil pencil, <laughs> I would not want to fight that thing, um, I mean, he play. I mean, honestly, chill guy, you'd probably get along with him fine, he's, he's, he's cool, he plays video games, he, uh, likes cream puffs, he's a, he's a pretty chill guy, he's a chill guy, you, you get along with him perfectly, you're, you're practically, you're practically the same person. In fact, maybe I, maybe when I was in middle school, I subliminally based this character off of you. I knew you were a chill guy, and Xerox is a chill guy. I think I think this is you, chill guy. This is you right here. You should change this to your. You should make this your avatar on Twitch. <laughs> All right. Um. So earlier I was uh, drawing the evil pencil from a. Uh, that from an old book I wrote called Origami Adventures. Um, so I'm going to draw the one of the main characters, or actually I might draw both of the main characters since I have a little time. Still waiting on DJ Mike Brady to come here with my dinner. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, draw. First off, I'm going to draw Wally the Origami Crane. So I was a, uh, I really uh, I got really into origami when I was in I think I was in middle school when I started doing it and. It's still something I do enjoy doing. I actually I haven't really done it in a long time, but I do enjoy it. And uh, I got into a, once I figured out how to make an origami crane. I it was something I just would randomly make. I actually I think at one point I had like probably five or six origami cranes just lying around in my room for no real reason. I just felt like making them because I could. And so yeah, I. Ended up making a book about origami creatures because that was <laughs> one of my big interests at the time. So there we go. We got the mouth here. We got the tail. Got the legs. We got these little folds here that always appear on an origami crane. And uh, yeah, there we go. Give him some eyebrows. And there is Wally. <clears throat> All right, his uh, his main friend, his best friend and partner in the book was uh, Freddy the Jumping Frog. So let me go ahead and draw him. Those are another one that I really enjoyed making a lot. And unlike with the crane, this was you know this had an extra bit of novelty to it because you could actually legitimately play with it. You could press down with your finger. And you can press this little springy part down, and it would just go jump. You let it go, and it would jump. It would jump. Boing! So that was always something I really enjoyed doing. Um, the control was never very good. I could never really get it to go the way I wanted to, but it was just fun watching it jump. All right, so we got the eyes here. We got the mouth. Got some eyebrows, and uh, there we go. We got our... Two characters, Wally and Freddy. Let me go back to multi view here. All right. All right. Let me see. I, I got my. Uh, I got a, one of my posters over here in the corner of the room that has a lot of my characters on it. That's where I'm looking and seeing what I can draw next. Let's see. 
I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and draw uh, Flame the Racing Tire. This is another one of my older characters. So uh, basically, it's it's a tire that came to life through a freak incident, and he decides he wants to race. It's all right. So I got got to draw the spokes here. There we go. Give him a smile there. Add some pupils to the eyes. Now I'm going to add the tread now. Got to make him look like, got to make him look like a real tire. I mean, yeah, just add up with the realism a bit. I mean, the big cartoony eyes do kind of take away from the realism a little bit, but I feel like if I add enough tread, it'll look realistic. All right, so I've got a couple tread lines on the inside. Gonna add a couple here on the outside. And go ahead and give him some angry eyebrows. Not really so much angry eyebrows, as just much as determined eyebrows. He's he's gonna win that. He's gonna win that trophy. He's gonna take first place. All right. And yeah, there we go. That is uh. <laughs> F-L-A-M-E FLAME! The racing tire. Alright. There we go. All right, um, all right, I'm probably going to do one more drawing here before I wrap it up for the night. Uh, let me just go ahead and uh, do it for anyone who's still watching here. Let me just go ahead and do a quick review of all the drawings I've done tonight. For all those who came in later and didn't get to see everything. All right, so for Art Vandalay, 1979, we had a uh, <laughs> had kind of a mini story here with a. Thank you, Jill Guy. I've had a, I've had a good time too. Uh, we had this uh, little mini narrative where this hamster was trying to get this carrot while this evil hand was trying to stop her from getting the carrot because I guess it just either it was just being mean for no good reason. That's that's a common thing, just being a jerk for no good reason. Or it wanted the carrot for itself, as L. Lowry suggested. L. Lowry, the master storyteller. And uh, then we have this after frame where the hand's been tied up, and uh, Amster got his fill. He got to eat that whole carrot. He's in there nice and plump, satisfied. Mm, feeling good. Thank you, L. Lowry. Really appreciate it. Uh, so for... Uh, Komodo Sorelius, uh, she requested a chimp riding a bicycle with a sombrero, and it's just whistling. Um, he's a Mexican whistler. <clears throat> uh, kids, ask your parents what that means. Uh, <laughs> DJ Mike Brady, uh, <laughs> I think probably made my, re my favorite request of the night. He, had a, he asked for Bob Ross drawing a happy little dinosaur and a happy little meteor falling from the sky. And then everyone dies. All right. Uh, I think the first, I think this was the first request that came in. This was a, uh, this was Tracer Fit. 
who requested a zombie chicken with a shamrock and brain smoothie. And the smoothie wasn't, I guess they didn't, the blender didn't quite do its job quite right, because you can still see a full, tiny little brain in there, along with several shamrocks. And this chicken just, it, it, it looks messed, it looks like it's been through a while. It's got these big bite marks all over it. The leg has a bite taken out, the tail has a bite taken out, the head has a bite taken out. His pupils are dilated. Uh, his, one of his zits is spewing out gas. This, this, this chicken's seen better days. And uh, DJ Danny B requested a leprechaun princess. I added some uh, rolling hills, and nope, looks like DJ Mike Brady has come with my food. I will, um, I'll be back in just a second. I'll, uh, go ahead and, oh, actually, uh, you know what, I actually need to let him in. So I'll, uh, so I'm thinking, should I, I'll be back in just a minute. I'll go ahead and go to full screen here. All right, uh, sorry about that. If anyone is still here, um, I was thinking DJ Mike Brady would uh, actually be coming in and I could get him on camera for a minute, but he just made a drive-by stop. All right, so I think I've shown all the drawings. I oh no, no, there was one more. This, this was a good one, too. Actually, there was a couple more. Uh, so, uh, Larissa L. Lowry requested I draw a Paddington Bear. So there's that. And uh, Chill Guy 710 requested Mario Surfing and Hang and Loose. He's a Hang and Loose. Let's -a go. And I think I think that was all the drawings for tonight. I did draw a bunch of my characters, but I think as far as requests go, that was it. So, um, all right, Chill Guy 710, you're still here. Awesome. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. Um. Thank you to everyone who watched. I will be back next week with more drawings, and I will be uploading colored versions of these to uh, my social media accounts. Um, please, if you haven't already, please find me on Facebook and Instagram. And um, I will see you all next week. Uh, have a good night, everyone. Oh, um, yeah. Have a good night, everyone.